Crush FTP has advanced file transfer in the web interface. This can be very useful for clients who may not be nearby, such as between the US and Europe. The average ping time is around 150 milliseconds between the US and Europe. This drastically slows down the responsiveness of Crush FTP as well as any other server. File transfer speeds suffer as a result too. In this example, I'm going to show you what the advanced uploader can do to help file transfer speeds. First, I'm going to demonstrate the slow speeds. Here I'm uploading a 16 megabyte file. As you can see, because of the latency, even though we have a 45 megabit connection to the internet, we're only getting about 10 megabit of that due to the latency. Another example is when you're dealing with lots of small files. Here I'm going to grab a few small files and put them in their own folder. While the total size of these files is not very much, because the latency and the start and stop in every single file, it will take a while to upload. There may only be 19 files but it's taking a while because it has to keep starting and stopping on each one and the round trip latency between us and the server causes that to take longer. Now let me demonstrate how the advanced uploader can help. First, I'm going to delete the items that we've just uploaded. Next, I'm going to choose the files again, but this time using the advanced uploader. I'm clicking the lightning bolt to enable the Java applet, which runs the advanced uploader. and then I choose the files. I'm going to choose all 1200 files. So instead of having just 19 files, we now have 1200 files that we're going to upload using advanced mode. Start the transfer. The upload is finished on the server and the server is writing the files to disk. Take another couple seconds. And in the time that it took us to upload roughly 10 files using the normal mode, we uploaded 1200 files. And all files are on the server now. The other thing that advanced mode can do is it can overcome the latency by using multiple channels. To do this, we need to use the server preferences to enable a crush tunnel. A crush tunnel can take a single connection and distribute it across many different channels. This is an enterprise only feature. So I'm going to go to the preferences and create my crush tunnel configuration that's needed for it to operate. First I make a server port, I bind it to localhost and make it HTTP. Next I make a tunnel. And 
the defaults are generally okay. I'm going to allow 30 channels. That should allow us to maximize my bandwidth between my browser and the server. And lastly, we need to give our user access to that tunnel. So you go to the user manager, select your user, go to tunnels, enable it if it's disabled, and grant access to that tunnel. We're going to log out with our user and log back in again to get the tunnel. Previously with our single file transfer that we were doing, we were getting roughly one megabyte a second, a little bit less, which is equivalent to roughly 10 megabit of transfer speed. I've enabled the applet again, and let's go choose my files. This time I'm going to choose a much larger file, one gigabyte, and start the transfer. Initially you can see the speed is about the same because we're still using one channel. Then the advanced mode starts ramping up. And as you can see, since we're using multiple channels now, our speed has increased to the maximum that my ISP is allowing. So those are a few things that the advanced mode can help you with. And that's the end of this tutorial.